All right, guys, I'm at the FOSCAM website uh, on the page for my FOSCAM FI9821WV2. Uh, this is where you're going to download the IP camera tool that's going to allow you to set up your camera once you have it plugged into your router via Ethernet cable. So go down and uh, get to the support tab here. And uh, under CD installation software, I selected the one for Macintosh right here. Uh, the IP camera tool downloads itself and into a zip file that you'll want to open. So um, once you get that zip file unzipped, uh, you'll get this camera tool here. Now, in order to open that, uh, you have to make sure that under your security and privacy settings on your Mac, uh, you have the allow apps downloaded from anywhere enabled. If it only says Mac App Store or Mac App Store and identified developers, you won't be able to open the IP camera tool. So undo your security settings and set it to anywhere. That way you can open it. Uh, when you open it, it will, um, see your camera on your network if you have it plugged in uh, to your router via Ethernet and you just double click that and it opens a web browser. The browser is the front end interface to your camera. It's currently set at the default uh, which is admin as the username and no password. So you can go ahead and just click log in and that'll take you in. It also reminds you to change your username and password which you're going to want to do. Uh, matter of fact I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, guys, so I got my uh, username and password changed successfully. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do before you log back in is to download the plugins. Uh, these plugins work with the browser to show you the live stream of the video. And if you don't have these installed, uh, you won't see anything when you log in. So go ahead and click here to download these plugins. Uh, then go ahead and open them and install them. Select your install location, uh, put in your password, <clears throat> and it's going to install. So now that that's done, you can go back in. I'm going to log in. All right, guys, I'm logged into my camera. As you can see, it is on and uh, streaming inside of my server room. I can move it around here. It, uh, it's got pan, tilt, and zoom. Uh, although I haven't figured out how to zoom yet, uh, I know how to pan and tilt, but uh, I still got to figure that part out. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see the live video, and then over here we have the settings. Uh, you know, you have the setup wizard that walks you through some stuff. Over here we have the device information, including the camera model, what I've named it, uh, its ID, and uh, some other details as far as the firmware and plug-in version. Uh, I can see the status uh, of everything I got going on, if I have SD card in or not, uh, all of the uh, settings I have, including Wi-Fi and the uh, IR night vision, the session status, um, all that good stuff. I have logs here. I can uh, see everything that's happened <clears throat> in my camera. Under the basic settings, uh, I can change the camera name here, the time. Uh, I can add users, which I have a couple users in there now. Uh, if I had more than one camera, I could add those into the multi-stream. Uh, over here under live video, I can, you know, if I had more than one FOSCAM, this uh, web interface could show me all my different video streams throughout the house. So right now, uh, I'm only in my server closet, but, uh, you know, you can have up to, let's see, uh, looks like nine different camera streams going through this. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then... Uh, also, under my network, I can see the IP config, which I'm on DHCP. Uh, I can have it scanned for wireless, which uh, I already have my Wi-Fi saved in here. Uh, PPOE, DDNS, universal plug and play, port forwarding, mail settings. I can have it email me stuff. Uh, under the video settings, uh, I can change the stream and resolution, frame rate, all that good stuff. I can even put in variable bit rate uh, to save me some bandwidth uh, substreams. I have all that in here. On screen display, I can turn the timestamp on and off. Uh, that's pretty cool. Privacy zone. Uh, let's see, snapshot settings. I can schedule snapshots. I can uh, schedule the night vision to come on and off instead of having it automatically detect uh, according to my uh, sunset. Motion detection, I can turn that stuff on and uh, put in the parameters for that. 
the recording parameters, storage location. Right now, um, it's set to FTP because I'm going to integrate it with the QNAP NAS uh, surveillance station. Uh, alarm recording, pre-recorded stuff, uh, scheduled recording, SD card management. If I had that in there, I could manage that. Pan tilt, uh, speed settings, uh, cruise settings, and uh, startup options. So uh, I have the disable startup because every time it starts up, it wants to do like a 360 rotation. So turn that off. Uh, you can also set up uh, IP filtering for your firewall. You can back up and restore your settings here. Upgrade your firmware, which I've already done. Uh, you can just have it download and then you know walk through the README in the firmware file. There's going to be two firmware files that you have to install in order. So uh, there's patches you can put in. You can factory reset and you can reboot your device. So that's a quick look of the web interface. I'm going to go ahead and switch on over to the QNAP and show you how that integrates with Surveillance Station. All right, guys, I'm logged into my QNAP TS451, and uh, I'm at the home page where you can see I have Surveillance Station hooked up. Uh, this is an app on my TS451 NAS that allows me to have all the video from the uh, FOSCAM recorded directly onto my NAS. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it. I have the camera configured already. Uh, you can see the resolution, the frame rate, the bit rate, all the good stuff. Uh, you can see that it's actively recording. Uh, the recording files are going to be kept for seven days. Um, you can see it here, and I also had to go into camera configuration. And uh, when I did that, I had to walk through the setup page where it asked me to, uh, you know, select the type of camera, uh, put in the IP address, the port I had to specify, and then uh, sign in with my account. So you can see that it's connected. It picks up the stream here. Then I can also select the uh, video settings here as well. Uh, and I can schedule uh, the times that I want it to record. So uh, currently I have <laughs> every hour of every day set to be recorded uh, for a period of one week. So basically uh, I'm going to not miss anything that happens outside uh, basically. And uh, yeah, so those are the settings for the camera. I can have up to two cameras in here as part of my license uh, with the surveillance station. Now over here I can uh, set some events on when I want it to... Uh, if, if I was doing alarm recording, it wouldn't be just a block of time where it's recording all the time. Here I would specify, you know, when I wanted to record and uh, I could apply those settings to all my cameras or just one camera. Now there's other uh, advanced settings here uh, for alarm recording. I can uh, specify uh, how many minutes I wanted to record after an alarm is triggered and what to do when my NAS starts to become full with the recordings. Uh, so some cool settings here and, uh, you know, I can have pre and post uh, interval times for when the alarm event happens, uh, you know, for when to start recording and end the recording. So uh, say it detects motion, I could have it record everything for like 30 seconds or, you know, 90 seconds prior to the event and 90 seconds after. Uh, the privileges, uh, obviously, I have... Uh, allowed my admin account to be able to monitor and control everything on the cameras here. And also uh, I can specify the RTP port range. Uh, I can see the logs. You can see that I had some uh, events where before I got it connected, it, it didn't detect a connection. So it saved those logs here. And then uh, again, I have the licenses here to where I can... Uh, <clears throat> check my camera logs. So anyway, guys, that is how you set up your uh, IP camera with the uh, QNAP TS451 surveillance station. So, you know, you could use the SD card on your FOSCAM to save the video, or if you have a QNAP NAS, uh, you can have it act as the DVR for your recordings. Uh, anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I uh, hope you like this video. Please do thumbs up and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And uh, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.